Uh, it's kind of surprising how often I get this question. I get this question almost everywhere I go in the world, and my answer is kind of a grateful uh, no. I don't see a difference. Everywhere I talk to teenagers, all over the world, whatever group of teenagers I'm talking to, if it's in London, Edinburgh, Dublin, uh, Budapest, I was in Ljubljana, so I was in Taipei, or even all over America, um, they ask the same questions, and they have the same concerns, and the same worries, and are thinking about the same issues. So I don't actually see a difference, and I'm, I'm happy about that, because I think if teenagers are the same the world over, then there's kind of hope for all of us, because you know, maybe nations are not as important as we seem to think they are. Um, so no, I don't see a difference, and I'm very happy. My ambitions are never usually that concrete in my head. Uh, I mean, I always go after what I feel is the most truthful character and uh, what I want to see. And I often write a lot about um, things that I, I didn't see growing up, things that I wanted to see and longed to see, but, but didn't, but never saw. And so that's probably where Adam came from. And that's probably why I responded to his story so much. He was somebody that I would have been thrilled to be able to read about when I was 15 or 16 and um, so there's not a conscious decision because I, I don't think you can I don't think you create a living character that way if you don't if you start with a set of circumstances rather than I don't know the spark of a character but um, it's definitely there that idea that it's not a big deal because guess what it's not a big deal and I've always said uh, one of the ways to one of the ways to change the world is to act as if the world has already changed and I'm a big believer in that so this isn't a big deal, so I'm not going to pretend that it is in the book. So let's just get on with telling a story. What advice can you ever give about fitting in? That's the thing, to, to be a teenager is to not fit in. That is the whole Sadly, the whole operating principle of what teenage life is like. It's why, you, it's why you feel so different as a teenager. It's the very first time you've stepped away from your family. And it's the first time you said, I am not that thing. I am now this new thing. I am my own thing. And that's a lonely step because you are literally stepping away from everyone that you've all known up to that point. And this is the time where you find people, find your friends, find your tribe, find the ways that you belong, ways that you can fit in. So there's no way to make that artificial. I'm afraid you just kind of have to not fit in for a while. And that feeling, which I think is not, I don't think there's much negative about that. I think certainly writers come from a feeling of, of not fitting in, and many artists do, and you know, certainly many scientists do. So I think, it's, I think there's no way to artificially fit in. Trying to find out who you are, the process of trying to find out who you are, is difficult, and it should be, because you are valuable and who you are is important. Um, so concentrate more on, I think, discovering your boundaries and discovering the things that matter to you. The fitting in will come later and, and, and that it'll, it'll come at the right time. So uh, there, there are bigger fish to fry, there's more exciting fish to fry, which are, well, they're you. They're, they're the important, essential you. So concentrate on that, I think. Um, what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to think of what other book of mine has a ghost in it. Um, I suppose not ghosts, but I am really a very big believer in the idea that there's no such thing as a realistic story. Even if it's set in contemporary London, right now, today, it's still fantasy. Because it's still characters that you've created arcing towards their destinies, and there's coincidences, and there's a, you know, there's a, a plot and a climax and so on. So I think all stories are fantastical. And if I believe that that's true, I think if, if I can embrace that, then uh, the boundaries between putatively realistic, which I don't believe exists, and fantastical are much easier to cross. So a thing like a ghost in this book, or um, the noise in the Chaos Walking trilogy, or the monster, obviously, and a monster calls. To me, all that needs to happen is I need to make a world where these things logically take place, where these things are, in fact, realistic. And that's all I need to do. And I think if you, well, you know, why not? Why not push a story? Why not? All they are, all the story is, all fiction is, is a falsehood that reflects a truth. 
You know, you are, these things do not exist. They are not real. But within that, they reflect a truth. So why not? Why not go for it? You know, the whole world, the whole possible universe, the whole potential universe is your canvas. Why not really, why not go for it? Why not throw in a ghost or two? Oof. I don't regard um, the books as sort of someone's complete life. Sort of in relation to this question, I don't regard the the story as um, the full story. If you see what I mean, I regard them as a little slice of the characters' lives. But it is the story that I want to tell about the characters' lives, and then I kind of feel like I should let them get on with it without me badgering them and pushing them around and you know, making them suffer. So I don't, I, I, I rarely ever feel a, a real strong impulse to revisit books that I've already written because I feel like that story's been told and I'm so terrified of complacency. I think complacency is the absolute death of creativity and I am worried about complacency. I never want to think, oh, I'm going to do this great. I need to be frightened and I need to be worried. And so unfamiliar territory is better for me creative, creatively. But the characters I like, probably not to visit as a story, but the characters that I do wonder about, you know, I, saw, I always wonder how Wilf is doing now, from Chaos Walking, and I'd love to know... I love Tommy from More Than This. I'd love to know what he's up to. I think Tommy is Tommy's one of my favorite characters ever that I've written. And, uh, and actually, since release takes place on a single day, I'd love to know what happens to Adam after that day, because there's some big things that are about to change, and I'd be curious to see how he handles them. But, but these stories are done. I think it's time to send the characters out into the world, and and let them find their own destinies while I look for new ones.